The objective or conscious mind is the outer or surface mind of mind. It is the finite mind of very close limitations. It receives impressions through the organs of sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. It learns from books, speech, experience, and experiment. The subliminal mind is one with the infinite mind of the universe, differing only in degree and not in kind. Yet this is useless if the object of mind does not make use of the potential powers lying dormant within. The subconscious mind is also brimming with tremendous power and is a wonderful intelligence far exceeding anything that the objective consciousness can grasp or understand. Furthermore, this is regulated and controlled by thoughts, impressions, and suggestions coming through the conscious mind. Therefore, this great intelligence is ruled and governed, or ought to be, by the objective mind. If the mind of the senses does not govern wisely, or does not govern at all, but lets the subconscious mind run uncontrollably and act upon instincts and false impressions, untruths, and harmful suggestions, it will turn the whole life into an inferno of trouble and difficulty. Therefore, you will see that the objective mind, although very limited, is, in a way, the most important of all as far as this life and consciousness are concerned, for through it the ego governs, or can govern, the whole of the submerged mind. The ego is the I part of man. It is his personal, individual inner self. The real you is your individual ego. The real you within is seeking expression through minds and through your brain and body and outer life. It can only do this properly when the will is strong enough either to carry out or force your minds to carry out the commands of the ego. Suppose the real inner you says to the will, I am going to succeed in this undertaking. Let's imagine that this undertaking is a course of study which requires a great deal of application and perseverance, and a certain amount of sacrifice of pleasure for its accomplishment. It requires working while others are playing and resisting requests on the part of friends to join them in their fun. After receiving its instructions, the will passes on the order through the conscious to the subconscious mind, but unless your will is naturally very strong, it does this in a half-hearted manner. Although this supposed course of study is of the utmost importance because without it you cannot succeed in your profession or calling. But the will may be so weak that it cannot impress this sufficiently upon the subconscious mind with the result that there is very little driving force behind your efforts. For a time, the study goes along successfully. For one thing, the first lessons are always easy, and for another, there is the novelty and freshness of the new work and the glow of self-satisfaction at having entered upon a self-appointed task. But after a time, the tasks get more difficult and require more application and concentration the calls of friends to join them in their adventures become more insistent and the will, not being strong, can no longer deal with the situation. The will, through weakness, allows suggestions such as, the task is too difficult, others are enjoying life, why shouldn't I? Others go about life without working themselves to death, so why not me? To pass down into the subconscious mind. The latter, knowing no better, and acting entirely upon suggestion, responds accordingly with the results that the lessons are cast aside, games are indulged in instead, and another lack of success is written large on the scroll of life. Suppose on the other hand that your will has been reinforced through affirmations. In this manner, the subconscious mind is deeply impressed. It realizes that this self-imposed task has to be accomplished somehow no matter what the cost may be, in hard work, perseverance, discomfort, and self-sacrifice. Therefore, from the very beginning there is great driving power put behind your efforts. A concrete, well-defined image of the object of your endeavor, 
the successful ending of your studies, the pride of achievement, the pleasure it will give your friends, the great assistance it will be to you in your profession, the increased status, the enlarged income, the better house, the improved condition of living for yourself and those dependent on you, all these combined in one sharply defined image are impressed upon the subconscious mind so deeply that they form a pattern with which the mind will concentrate all its intense energies, activities, and powers. The energies and powers of the mind working on definite lines laid out by the will create in the life a complete replica of the image which has been held in the mind. When studies become difficult, instead of faltering, the mind puts forth greater effort, generates more power, and overcomes any difficulty. When friends try to entice you to leave your task and join them in their fun, invitations fall on deaf ears. You reply, I must complete my course of study, or I must pass my exam. When I have succeeded and acquired the position I desire, then, and not until then, will I unbend a little. This is why very few people succeed and many fail. Most do not have the staying power to succeed. They have the desire to succeed, but they lack the force of character and the necessary willpower to carry their plans to fruition. Some of them are full of impressive and ingenious ideas, but they never carry them out. They see their opportunities, but lack the strength to take advantage of them. These types always have plenty of excuses for non-success. They will never admit that it was the will that failed. Circumstances, they say, are against them. Nobody will help at the critical moment. Something or other happened which accounted for the failure. And so they give up their endeavors just at the moment when they needed only a little push to get them past the corner and on the road to permanent success. Now they work for someone else, and for the rest of their lives will be a servant and nothing but insufficiency and work to look forward to in old age. The number of men endowed with the necessary strength of will to succeed by willpower alone is comparatively small. For one who can succeed in this way, there are thousands who are unsuccessful. These thousands might be turned into successes if they only realized the power within them and understood the wonders that can be brought about through affirmations and mental imagery. Men and women, with even an ordinary amount of willpower, can achieve success beyond their wildest dreams when they have learned to use their true inward powers and to reinforce their will by the use of affirmations and mental imagery. But it must not be thought that because you are being taught valuable metaphysical knowledge that you can neglect your will. On the contrary, the training of will is of utmost importance. In order to succeed, you need imagination and vision, faith in yourself and the power within you, but more than all else, the ability to stay committed to endeavors despite all obstacles is required, and this is largely dependent on the strength of the will. Desire to succeed, energy, ambition, ability, intellect, imagination, capacity, large ideas, all are good, all vitally necessary for the achievement of success, but they are all useless if staying power is lacking. If the will is weak, then nothing can be accomplished. Therefore, one of the primary objects of this information is the building up within you of that staying power, that strength of purpose, that stability of character, that inflexibility of will that are necessary for the achievement of the highest success. While it teaches valuable metaphysical knowledge, which gives you a tremendous advantage in life because it reveals to you your inward powers and shows you how to use them, these powers and forces have to be controlled by your will, otherwise they may do harm instead of good. That being said, Success will not be won by willpower alone. It is not willpower that creates, inspires, and attracts success. It is the subliminal mind that is the fountain of perpetual power and the storehouse of wisdom. 
It is the subconscious mind that provides the driving power, but is the will that provides the staying power. The ego decides what is to be done. It is the will that compels the subconscious mind to carry out the wishes of the ego. It is not the will that executes. Execution comes from the power of the subconscious mind. Affirmations remove fear from the will. If you affirm calmly, steadily, persistently, and confidently that you will perform some difficult task at a certain time, you will find, when the time comes, that there will be an impulse urging you to perform that duty. And when you do the thing you dread or dislike, you find to your surprise that it is not half as difficult or unpleasant as you thought it would be. This is the power of the subconscious mind. It not only urges you to act at the proper time, it also supplies you with the power to act. It must be pointed out here that when the subconscious mind gives you an impulse for action, it should be carried out. For example, if you have affirmed, both at night and early in the morning, that at 3 p.m. you will go into your boss's office and ask for a raise, then when the time arrives, go do it. Fear will say, he is a very unpleasant man and will possibly snap your head off, put it off for another day. Instead of listening to the voice of fear, deny it and say, there is no fear, man is a perfect mental creature and can know no fear. Then affirm, I am courageous and fear no man. I am success. I attract success by the infinite power within me. And follow that up by completing the request from him. You will find him far easier to deal with than you expected. If you do not get the raise, you may have paved the way for it, or by finding out why your request is refused, you may be able to make a raise possible in the near future. In any case, you have done yourself good, you have strengthened your will by pushing past your fear. If, however, you listen to the voice of fear and put the dreaded meeting off until the next day, you do yourself a grievous harm. This gives more power and energy to the limitation you've placed on yourself. If you affirm that you are going to do a certain act and then don't do it, even when your faithful subconscious mind gives you the helpful impulse, then you are destroying your mental powers. You are deliberately slamming the door of progress and achievement in your own face. With the use of affirmations, you can influence the powers within you so definitely that things impossible to you become comparatively easy to accomplish. The only condition is that you act with decision, that you go fearlessly forward and do exactly what you have planned to do. As you progress in scientific thinking, you'll find wonderful possibilities opening up for you. As you advance in knowledge and power, you can transfer your affirmations to more difficult problems. The world and life are surpassingly beautiful, but not if you view them with a blind eye. If life and the world are not entrancingly lovely to you, it is because your mind and perception are obscured. If you will deny negativity and affirm the positive at every possible moment, you will, every time you do so, make the beauty and magnificence of life and the loveliness of the world more apparent to your senses. If you persevere day after day and week after week and month after month, you will come to that stage when you will see things as they are, face to face. You will then be unable to find any words with which to express the pleasure which you possess. And not only do beauty and loveliness, happiness, joy, and content come through the denial of negativity and affirmations of positivity, but the same thing applies to circumstances. Poor or difficult or unpleasant circumstances are all negative. Poverty, lack, and want are, like disease, quite foreign to that which we know as good. But the denial of negativities, we remove all these undesirable conditions from our lives, and by the affirmation of good, we attract into our lives true success and prosperity and freedom from every kind of lack and limitation. Every time we do this, we make our lives a little better. It is by constant and continual use 
that we not only stem the tide of negativity, but make progress in the right direction. One superb way to do this is by using the denial, there is no negativity, and following that with the affirmation, only infinite good. This should be as much a part of your life as breathing. For further positive impression of the mind, try the following. Take a simple flower, examine it carefully, note its purity and sweetness, loveliness, its beauty. Say to yourself, this flower is an expression of the universal life of mind, as I am an expression of the universal life of mind, therefore we are the same. There is only one life, one mind, the universal, and I, this flower, are but individual expressions of that life and mind. This flower is a messenger from the unseen. It tells me that there is no negativity. The intelligence that produced this lovely token cannot be negative, cannot produce negativity, therefore there is nothing negative, only that which exists in my own mind. Continue to practice concentration on one thought or image to the exclusion of all other thoughts and images until the mind is perfectly calm. In order for you to start getting results quickly, try the following exercise. Just as you are falling asleep, calm and still the mind. When you have accomplished this, bring your problem before your mind and affirm that while you sleep, your subliminal mind will solve your problem and give you the answer in the morning. Follow that by dismissing it from your mind and go to sleep. In the morning, when you are awake, refuse to worry about your problem or engage in negative thoughts about it. Instead, still the mind as before and the answer will come. The more you practice this and make use of its faculty, the clearer and more certain the results will be. Hold in your mind a sharp, definite picture of the success you have planned. Whatever it is that you desire, no matter whether it be invention, genius, love, friends, a house, a car, a career, or perfect health, picture it very definitely and distinctly and hold this image in your mind. Keep constantly calling it up, and every time that you do, let it thrill you with pleasure. As you call up the picture, affirm, I am success, and believe that it is already yours. Keep on affirming success and visualizing success, and it will come to you in a much larger volume than ever you imagined possible. <laughs>